We walked quickly down the empty halls to our respective classes. As we reached the door to Lily's 3-2 classroom, she turns towards me. He said, thank you for sharing lunch with us today. My pleasure, Lily. And with that, we part ways, Lily entering her classroom and leaving Hanako with me to make off to her own. She's still looking like she wants to run away. So, do you really want to go back to class now? Uh, yes. Okay, then. I feel like I should say something more to her, but it's hard to come up with anything that would be appropriate and safe enough. And Lily was right. The more time we spend out here, the more explaining we have to do. I open the rear door to the class and walk in. The teacher looks up at me and opens his mouth to say something. However, as Hanako follows me in and closes the door, he simply nods to us and continues his lecture. This is the third time that Hanako has had her truancy practically ignored. There is definitely something going on here. Well, it's probably, you know, something that she's able to do because of her disability. I don't know. We make our way to our seats, and I notice that Misha and Shizune are both missing as well. I wonder if it is some form of informal agreement with the staff, that if, or if it's a perk afforded to the unique students of the school. Trying to make as little disturbance as I can, I extract the relevant textbooks from my bag and start catching up. The class goes on quietly. The teacher seems like an okay person, despite the weird first impression I got. And the material is relatively interesting. However, the way he teaches is really bizarre. It's as if he expects that everyone is a natural genius. When the final bell sounds... I realize that there's still a lot of time left in the day, and I'm left wondering what to do. It's odd that the hospital I had 24 hours a day of free time, but here, filling the considerably shorter hours feels difficult. Everyone else leaves, and I'm left alone with the teacher. Mutao is examining the assignment sheets we were working on earlier, making marking them with a red pen red ball pen. Raising his eyes from his papers briefly, he notices me and furrows his brow. What is it, Nakai? I jump at him addressing me, but I guess it's natural to spark some conversation since there's nobody around. Um, nothing. Thinking about what I'd do after school. The teacher slowly puts a cap on the pen. He is holding and arranges his papers into a stack, clacking it against the desk twice. He seems very methodical, and for a brief moment I'm reminded of she's... But the teacher is more unhurried and relaxed, much more routine. You have no plans? No, I consider joining a club, but I don't know what kind of club would interest me. Go observe a meeting of someone else's club. Might pique your interest. I guess. I just... But I don't know how to continue from there. Muto looks at me in a way that makes me quickly want to take the words back to avoid a conversation. But I can't, so I have to forge ahead. I just don't know how to deal with people. I mean the other students. I'm talking to people and everything, so it's not like I'd be isolated or anything. I just don't know what to think about the disabilities. It's like, it feels that I'm being impolite if I pay attention to them, and it's weird to ignore them. Damned if I do, damned if I don't. The teacher scratches his cheek absentmindedly, looking very unresponsive. These things are only an issue if you make them one. You can talk normally with someone even if they are blind or something. Try to look behind the superficial. There's not a single student here who isn't just a normal kid behind whatever they might seem at first glance. It says the same thing as Yuko did. I know they're right, but it's hard. 
how can you not consider for an example Shizune's deafness, when the only way to communicate with her is to talk through Nisha? Or Hanako. It's not like you can ignore her face. I mean... Ah, uh, never mind. But... I'm interrupted by the door of the classroom suddenly slamming open. Teacher! Misha crashes in, hands straight in an enthusiastic greeting. Her voice loud and lively enough to wake the dead from their graves. God damn, woman! She starts towards the teacher's desk with her bouncy step, hands energetically swinging with the rhythm. Motherfucker. Muto visibly dismayed at the interruption and Misha in general slumps in his chair. Oh god, this bitch again. Mikado. Misha stops in her tracks and looks around cluelessly, as if she's sensing from his tone that something's wrong but has no idea what. Yes? We have talked about volume control before. Yes. But she doesn't lower her voice at all and the teacher just rubs his eyes. <sighs> so what is it? I... We need help. We're running out of supplies for the festival stands. This is a distress. She weighs a pink slip of paper she's holding around. So go get more supplies from the art room. What's the problem with that? Plywood. Plywood is always the problem. Last time we wanted more, there was only a little. But that time we just took it and went with that. Now there's like none left there. So do you know where there is some? I don't understand. How would I know? Shichan, I mean the president thought that a teacher would know if there is plywood. Was she wrong? Amuto looks like he is in great pain, frowning with his entire essence, and Misha doesn't get it at all. Looking at the two of them communicate is terrible. Like looking at a man being tortured by drilling his skull open while blasting pop music at full volume at the same fucking time. That sounds like a weird gore video. I'm afraid I have no idea if there is any plywood in the school, let alone where it would be if there was any. Aww, what should I do? Perhaps try to find Mr. Namiya? Or Nomiya? I'm quite sure you would know where to find everything you need. You'd have to pry them from his cold, dead hands, but that's a different matter. Ah! I don't have the time! We're so busy! She holds her head with both of her hands, looking as despairing as it's possible for a person like her. Without even noticing, she crumples the note she's holding against her hair. I shouldn't even be fetching these things. There's so much to do and we're failing. We're falling behind the schedule. Muto looks at her gravely and then suddenly smiles. Smiling doesn't really fit his face, but I'd... But it'd be better if he didn't. I think it'd be better if he didn't. I wonder if you could get some temporary help. He switches to staring at me focusedly. With a hard expression, as if trying to say, Go make some friends. Get a little shit. Uh, I guess I can give you a hand. <laughs> you can't? Thanks, Hee-chan. You really are nice. As she pauses, does a double take, and then points at me with her fingers, yelping, ah! And looks very puzzled. Come to think of it, What's Hee-chan doing here? Class is over, you should be having fun! Oh, we had a little chat. Oh no! It's not detention, is it? Are you in trouble, Hee-chan? No, I'm not. Is Hee-chan in trouble, teacher? No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking call it! That's great! I love this teacher. Amuto sighs deeply, and I feel that I have to help Misha to get her off the teacher's back. So what do you need? Here's a list. I can try to find the plywood from somewhere if there's none in the art room. She offers me the note she's holding, and I take it, hesitating a bit. I said I'd help you, but this has no implications on whether or not I'm joining the council or not. Aww. Still, 
Thanks, Hee-chan. Try to be quick. We are in a stall, stall building streak now. We must hurry, hurry, hurry! As she bounces out of the classroom, leaving me and the teacher looking at each other with something that feels like a silent agreement. Well, there you have it, Nakai. You have something to do now. Please don't sound so smug. Looking at the list with a number of items ranging from paint to plywood, all written with small, neat handwriting that is undoubtedly Shizune's, I heave a sigh. <sighs> I'll be going then. Waving the long list limply at the teacher, I exit the hallway. <laughs> 